please sit in any comfortable meditative posture. Hands on your knees in Jnana or Jain Mudra. Eyes gently closed. Awareness at the eyebrow center. And maintaining your awareness at the eyebrow center. We shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by the Shanti Mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahavir Yang Ravavahai Tejas Vina Vadita Mastu Ma Ved Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Hari Om Sat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the floors, guys. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, relaxing the eyes, the brain, the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Namunarayan. Let us begin the Swadhyaya for the seventh week. And to do so, let us begin with the revision of what happened in the previous week. In the previous week, we had looked at Sutras 28 to 33. Let us chant them twice and go through their meanings very brief. Tajapas tadartha bhavanam tata pratyak chetana dhigamo pyantaraya bhavascha vyadhisthyana saunshaya pramadalasya virati bhranti darshana labdha bhumi katva navasthitatvani chitta vikshepa te antaraya ha Dukha dharmana syanga me jayatva shvasa prashvasa vikshepa sahabhuaha. Tat pratishedhartham ekatatva bhyasaha. Let us repeat them once again. Tat japas tadartha bhavanam. Tat Japaha tat artha bhavanam tataha pratyak chetana adhigamaha api antaraya abhavaha cha vyadhi stiana saunshaya pramada alasya avirati bhranti darshana alabdha bhumi katva anavasthitatvani chitta vikshepaha te antaraya ha dukha Dharmanasya Angame Jayatva Shwasa Prashwasa Vikshepa Sahabhuaha Tat Pratishedhartham Eka Tattva Abhyasa Now let us look at the meanings of each. Tat Japaha Tadartha Bhavanam before this, Maharshi Patanjali spoke about Ishwar Pranidhan and that Om is the Tasya Vachakaha Pranava. Now, he has explained that 
this should be chanted repeatedly and mentally one should dwell on the meaning which means that we should not be just chanting mechanically om 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 i am having a look at this that the other doing this multitasking as we generally call it multitasking in the world is good but over here we have to get rid of all those multis and stick to one that is the whole idea to be able to bring the mind to a state of one pointedness to do that he has advised chanting of the mantra om while dwelling on its meaning then he goes ahead to explain the significance of that what happens by the meditation on om the consciousness gets reversed normally the consciousness is outgoing i am looking at the sen uh, sense objects i am thinking about them and mind is all engaged into that this process gets inverted so the mind turns inwards and the obstacles which come in this path also get overcome so he is now bringing what are the obstacles what are the obstacles he has named them vyadhi disease styan dullness inertia samshaya so samshaya means a doubting mind procrastination next comes pramad uh, erroneous behavior we know something is wrong still we can't help it alasya laziness avirati there has to there is a craving for enjoyments and that craving pulls you away bhranti darshana your perception gets confused alabdha bhumi khatva all this mind is in a state where it is not able to go into a finer subtle state where the mind becomes one pointed then there are distractions these cause a shift and these are the things which does not allow the mind to get one pointed now he explains further about the distractions the distraction of the mind comes with four of its colleagues dukha dharmanasya angamejayatva shwasa prashwasa dukha is sorrow dharmanasya is depression angamejayatva is unsteadiness in the body continuously you feel fidgety and also your breathing patterns you are you know when you are emotionally disturbed your breath does not remain steady sometimes you have a shallow breath sometimes a deep breath sometimes you breathe very fast irregular breathing these are the distract you know these are the four accompanies of distraction of the mind and we need to work towards them towards overcoming them at pratishedhartham ek tatva abhyasa now to overcome this what do we do we do ek tatva abhyasa we take up one stuff one point one object one principle and doing that then we focus on that continuously for a long period of time the principle of abhyas sa tu dirgha kala nairantarya satkara asevito dhudabhumi when we do that then the obstacles slowly start getting over now he goes in this week sutra 33 to 37 he comes to a different perspective today morning we already have read the sutra so let us not waste time in doing that let us get into the meanings of the sutras what it indicates to us you see when there is a event of pleasure something which is very happy we get distracted with it 
and we want that and only that. But Manasi Patanjali says that be it pleasure or pain, be it good or not good, what should be our approach to the events and also to the persons who cause these events. If there is a person who is giving you pleasure, you will do anything and everything for that person. You go overboard. And if somebody causes pain, you want to hit back. If there is something which is very uplifting, again the mind goes in that and we get swayed. And if it is not so, either we get pulled into that vice or we get repulsed. But Maharshi Patanjali has said, we have to develop friendliness with pleasure. There is an acknowledgement, oh yes, this is nice. But when we are friendly, we still maintain our decorum and our boundary. Huh. We are amenable, we are inclined, but we have not swayed away completely. That is friendliness. So, we maintain friendliness, a good rapport with things which give you pleasure because that is beneficial. For things which give you pain, sorrow, don't get angry, but rather learn to develop compassion. Now, it is very easy to speak about compassion. We have to be very careful that when we are speaking of compassion, we are not going into moralities. Oh no, you are having so much of a problem. That is why you are doing. We don't have to justify or condone the painful which this person is creating. What we have to do is we have to try and empathize with the reason why this person is creating this pain. What is the limitation this person has? Of course, it is creating problem for me and that I acknowledge. But I also step one bit out. Oh, that is the reason, poor fellow. Not pity, but oh, he is in a hard shape. Let good happen to him. Compassion is that. Let good happen to him. So, we are being honest. We are acknowledging the pain, the hardship which he or she or that event is inflicting upon us. But instead of reacting and getting angry or getting upset, we step one step back, have a larger perspective. Oh, this is the limitation due to which he is doing this. Oh, he needs really or she needs help. Let me pray that, oh God, that is the thing. When Jesus was on the cross, what did he say? Oh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is not a moral activity. This is something which comes from the deepest of expression because you are connected with a higher reality. And to be able to have this compassion, you are needed to be connected to this higher reality. And that is what the whole idea is. So, we are making use of the situation and generating compassion. By generating compassion, we are doing a connection with the higher self. So, even the event of pain is beneficial to us. Ah, we have to be careful. Not We don't have to be uh, stupid. Oh, pain is beneficial to us. Keep on inflicting pain on me. No, I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about my response. When you are inflicting pain on me, you try to do that on a dog or a cat or any animal, they will immediately scratch you or bite you or attack you back. That is the instinct. We need to move away from that instinct and we need to sublimate that instinct. We don't need to suppress it. Suppression needs, leads to problems. We need to sublimate that. Generate compassion. 
it takes great strength can you imagine jesus was there on the cross people have been insulting him abusing him and even when he is on the cross and he is suffering like anything and people are still teasing him and what not what is it that comes to his heart oh lord forgive them forgive them here he has acknowledged that what they are doing to me is an inappropriate action and this inappropriate action deserves to be punished he has acknowledged that for they know not what they do this is the approach we have to do at our level again there has to be no hypocrisy in this oh jesus did this so that is why we should do that no i am not speaking about that i am speaking about developing that quality wherein we can really feel that is something which is important when there is a virtuous thing let there be happiness within us because we deserve to be happy we don't deserve to be unhappy we deserve to be happy so be happy and that is something which is useful and when there is something which is apunya non virtuous vicious which drags you down which pulls you away again don't react to it maharshi says be indifferent to it there is a saying that that lady was impervious to his charms she was indifferent to him what does that mean it is not that she has not known she is not stupid that oh he is exerting charms on her she knows that she has observed it she understands it but she is indifferent to those charms those charms are not affecting her she has worn a raincoat a kavacham we have to we are indifferent okay you are doing that i know but i will still follow my way when we practice this this is not spontaneous spontaneous is the inst- instinctive response but if we develop this then swami shivanand ji used to say cultivating opposite virtue virtues and vices cultivate a virtue eradicate a vice that stems from this sutra when you cultivate a virtue you decide to respond in a specific manner when you eradicate a vice you decide not to respond in a specific manner and swami shivanand ji said that if you match the virtue and vice then it becomes easier that is what is the path of yoga now if this is difficult is there any other way because it it's not always easy so what can be done maharshi patanjali says doesn't matter there is another way pratchardana vidharana abhyam va pranasya now he says you can manipulate the pranas when you manipulate the pranas you move things around and when you work on the pranas then it has an effect on the mind also remember that story of the pranas and the senses and that round table conference mind was also on that round table conference the moment the pranas withdraw everything falls so if we work with the pranas now he has said pranas he has not said the breath yes we have to work with the breath to connect to the pranas but by the practice of exhalation and breath retention he is meaning the various mudras and various kriyas which will come separately which will come later but he is indicating that using breath and rechak and kumbhak we can do few activities by which pranic energy is manipulated that is yet another way you have 
मूल बंद यू हैव उड्डियांग बंद यू हैव जालंधर बंद यू हैव महामुद्रा यू नो वी हैव महावेद मुद्रा दीज आर ऑल प्रैक्टिस बाय विच यू मैन्यूपुलेट द प्राणिक एनर्जी दिस विल हेल्प इन सेटलिंग द माइंड there is yet another way he says what is the way he says that the you are always the mind is always outgoing always outgoing always outgoing and you can't help it fine make use of that start observing that what are the experiences my mind is going outwards oh i am aware uh there is a sound happening here i am aware it is 8 o'clock i am aware this i am aware that i am just extend your awareness completely outwards we are aware of the various studies have shown that in the mind we keep on getting information even if we are not conscious about it so these senses keep on getting sounds here smells there sides all of that has an impact on us and we are not aware about it first start becoming aware about it practice of antar mauna when i sit down with my eyes closed and i become aware of all the different sounds we are practicing antar mauna that is what he is speaking about maharshi patanjali says we can use the weakness of the mind and convert it into a strength you use the that as a basis for your meditation and doing so the chitta slowly automatically starts getting steady and transcends its limitations a similar thing which can be done the mind has got a lower uh, manifestation and a higher manifestation and the higher manifestation of the mind is the luminous state the hiranya garbha and if we can connect with that that is a state which is beyond all duality so we have to try and meditate on that aspect so he has given yet another form which we can utilize and lastly he speaks of vitaragam va vichit vitarag vishayam va chittam now if all these things are difficult then you can do one more thing there are people in history who have transcended the dualities raga dwe they have transcended the kleshas these people are the ones who have connected with the higher reality if you can install them at your meditation point and connect your mind to them superimpose those thoughts on your mind and you involve in that and in that and in that the energy of those such people that can put you upwards so he says that you can control the mind by concentrating on such people so these five are very essential for us depending on our nature we need to practice them and sometimes we also need to do a mixture of them because suppose there is a moment in time when my mind is extremely agitated make use of vishayavati va pravrutti rutvanna manasah sthiti nibandhini because at that point when there is lot of uh, energy in that uh, expression you cannot do other things so what do you do become aware oh 
this is happening, that is happening. I'm getting angry. I'm feeling this. What is the situation? What is happening? What are the smells I'm able to smell? What are the sounds I'm able to hear? What are the sights I can see? What are the thoughts coming in my mind? Observe them. Observe them without reacting to it. So use that. If there is a situation where you are in an event where there is a lot of uh, emotional content which is taking place, use Maitri Karuna Mudito Pekshanam Sukha Dukha Punya Punya Vishayanam Bhavata Chitta Prasadhanam. If everything is steady, quiet, then use Pachartana Vidharana Abhyam Vapranasya as an ongoing thing. So you see, uh, we can and we also need to keep on looking into what the mind is doing and respond accordingly. If it is sunny, we don't use a raincoat or an umbrella. If it is winter, we don't, uh, we use an overcoat or a sweater. So depending on the weather, we change the protective gear. In the same manner, depending on the state of the mind, there are these five activities which have been given. And they are complementary. They are not exclusive, mutually exclusive. Because you have 24 hours in the day. How do we respond? It is not that I perform my practice for half an hour in the morning and I'm done. My practices are done all good. No. When you are in midst of job, in midst of activities, in midst of the world, then your mind is running haywire. Make use of one thing. In your sadhana time, make use of another thing. When the mind is uh, disturbed, make use of the third thing. This way you need to have a judicious admixture of these multiple options which are available to us so that we can steady the mind. Those obstacles which have been mentioned with those accompaniments, they are overcome. And overcoming those obstacles, then we are able to connect to Tad Japas Tadartha Bhavanam. Then we are able to go to Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. And through Pranavaha, we are able to connect to Ishwar and that is Ishwar Pranidhan. So, in a way, all what he is telling now is a methodology for Ishwar Pranidhan. And why Ishwar Pranidhan? So that you can achieve the state of Samadhi. And as I have already said, Samadhi should for us indicate a state where we are in control of our mind. We are able to harness our mind for creative, constructive, useful, positive purposes. Because Samadhi for us is way too higher. So therefore, instead of looking at the final aim, let us look at one or two or three notches below. Because that is where, when you achieve, if you are going to, from Mumbai, if you are going to Delhi, if you first say that, okay, let me first reach Surat. Once I reach Surat, then I will you know, uh, re review. Once I reach Surat or once Surat is coming, then I say, okay, let me uh, reach, say, Merat or Kanpur. Then I, so th that way you keep on shifting your targets so that you can achieve your aim. In the same manner, we need to shift the tar target we need to decide what our target is. Samadhi cannot be our target. That is the goal. That is the aim. That is the final thing. We are away, away from that. So let us say harnessing the mind. So whenever we are speaking of all of this, the goal of all these activity is to harness the mind and to give it a positive direction for us. And for this, Maharshi Patanjali has given these multiple multiple ways by which we can do that. So this is something 
which we need to work with we need to understand think about look how it can apply in our day to day life and make notes of that and slowly start implementing that in our life we have completed our uh, explanation if there is any discussion or anything which we would like to ask or discuss about let us spend some time on that swami ji um, i have one question the last uh, last shloka where uh, marshi patanjali says um or you can um, concentrate on uh, on 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 the uh, beings who have transcended all possibilities and uh, so so yeah. that they they'll guide you further so in this category uh, do you think the because the the uh, great marshis who have uh, who have transcended uh, these they they probably they do they are not in the physical form as of today yeah so uh, is there a, is there a possibility because uh, uh, to to follow these uh, these beings as gurus or the guru has to be somebody who is in their physical body now uh see there are two different points here uh, he is maharshi patanjali is not speaking about guru at all okay saying that when i am keeping my eyes closed and i am concentrating on guru nanak dev or i am concentrating or on meher baba or i am concentrating on buddha or i am concentrating on jesus or i am concentrating on moses or i am concentrating on rama or on krishna or on whoever you have found to be one who has transcended dualities then you concentrate on that person in a way that becomes your psychic symbol in a way that can become your ishta devata depending on uh, you know which symbol we choose then when that happens then the main point is one is able to connect to that higher level and somehow by connecting to those higher beings their energy comes in and makes some shift intellectually also you are thinking of krishna and krishna and krishna and krishna and then suddenly oh in such a situation krishna would have behaved in this manner you know we get those insights so this is meant for that and this can be if you see anybody who is that way that can be in body that can be uh, without body both are fine the point of guru guru again as i have mentioned is a tatva is a principle and this tatva manifests in a human body for us because we are limited people uh, limited means our intellect is limited tasya vachaka pranavaha okay om is sufficient but it is not sufficient for us wo hamare liye wo bhi mushkil ho jata hai that is why in compassion i think god created this system called guru because guru is the manifestation of divinity and guru is that principle who takes your hand brings it takes the hand of the god connects the two and then moves away because then once you have reached god the intermediary is not needed then you realize that guru is god he is a reflection of god he is a manifestation he or she is a manifestation of god so it is something there for us and for that generally it is said that a living guru is always better because we can relate to a living guru easily but then there is a difficulty in that you see there is something known as a bhanti darshana and samshaya in the obstacles now 
about krishna we can say anything and we no oh he is god krishna oh he was going with the girls around oh my god now we can say nahi 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 wo to leela thi unki but at that time just imagine there is a story about bhagwan dattatre he was a great yogi and at one time to test he was sitting he was drinking madira and some people say that even there was a lady who was drinking madira some people say another lady was on his right hand and indra was shocked oh my god he has gone i what what can he teach me and all the moral things came up and uh, everybody left and then dattatreya by his yog maya made all these things up disappear this was just a leela he had created to test and once only those who i don't matter what happens you are the guru i am going to listen to him and those people who stuck to that for whom the samshaya and bhanti darshan could not affect to them bhagwan dattatreya gave his knowledge so you know in a way it is easier for us when a person is in body a guru is in body because then you can relate to him but then at that time we need to be aware of this because the guru is going to test us in these manners when we in a spiritual line when we decide to take the refuge of guru then the refuge of guru means you are exposing yourself to lot of hardships because the guru is going to test you once i remember swami ji was mentioning that sona aagi mein phekna padta hai tabhi wo nikhar karke upar aata hai aur jab aagi mein phekte hain to dard hota hai na another example is swami ji gave is that there is this block of wood and in this block of wood i have visualized a beautiful murti but to manifest that murti what has to happen chiseling has to be done just thinking oh this block of wood is beautiful it has such a beautiful murti in it doesn't do anything the chiseling is what the guru does and swami ji used to say that guru is like a surgeon he does egodectomy we know of appendectomy we know of gallbladder removal duodenectomy guru does egodectomy and egodectomy is very difficult bahut mushkil rehta hai nahi hota hai so when we are speaking of guru we have to be aware of this and uh, guru is not there for worldly problems for worldly problems go to a psychiatrist go to a psychologist go to a mentor go to a life coach your all of those there guru is not for that guru is for taking you on a higher level ha huh? all these things happen and guru out of compassion does all of that but guru is not for that guru is for a higher level so we should remember all these points when we speak of these matters here it is only using the higher energy to connect so that we feel up okay it is 8 o'clock there is no other question shall we wind up yes please sit in any comfortable asan for shanti part eyes gently closed hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra awareness at the eyebrow center visualize the form of your guru or your ishta devata or a brightly burning candle flame 
and maintaining your awareness on this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by Shanti. Taking in a deep breath. Asato ma sagamaya, Tamaso ma jotir gamaya, Mrutyor ma mrutam gamaya, Sarvesham swasti bhavatu, Sarvesham shantir bhavatu, Sarvesham purnam bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Tremba Kamyajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urvaruka Mivabandhanam Ratyor Mukshiyamam Ratat Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Hands in Pranamantra Twameva Mata Chapita Twameva Twameva Bandushcha Sakha Twameva Twameva Vidya Dravinam Twameva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Om Hari Om Tatsat Rub your palms gently Place them on the closed eyes Experience the warmth Experience this warmth is relaxing and energizing the eyes, the brain, the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Tatsat. Namunarayan. Jai Om.